Welcome to part one of this tutorial for GarageBand 10.1. My name is Adam Cochran. I'm an instructor of mass communication at Colorado Mesa University. Most of this tutorial is intended for students that I have in my courses, but I believe it will be helpful to almost anyone who may want to learn about GarageBand. Keep in mind the version is important and I will show you how to check the version of GarageBand you're using uh, as this tutorial proceeds. So to begin with, let's talk about how to get into GarageBand. In most Macs, or with most Macs, it appears down here on your dock. However, I've intentionally hit it so I could show you how to find it another way. If you hold Command and hit Space and type in GarageBand, and then hit your Return key, GarageBand will open up. If, you, you've, if you've used GarageBand in the past, it will probably open up to this screen right here. But I want to back up just a little bit and show you the other option. If you've never used GarageBand before, it will likely come up to this screen. I won't give you an exhaustive introduction to this, but uh, just know that you can work with software instruments. You can distort the sound as though it's coming through different types of amplifiers. You can record with microphones with also lots of uh, types of uh, voice, uh, what do I want to say, modifications. Uh, different types of filters put on the microphone as well. You can create a little ringtone if you have an iPhone. You also have a little drum pad that you can create lots of different types of percussion sounds and an electronic keyboard that creates more of a synthesizer sound. There's a songwriter option and you can play with that all you want. We won't be using that at all in class and I think that's more fun to discover for yourself anyway. And then there's an empty project. And that's where we're going to spend most of our time in GarageBand. If you are a songwriter, also note these other options down below. You can adjust the tempo, the key signature, your time signature, and you can manipulate where the sound is coming from. It could come from a microphone, as I have selected here, or if you've plugged in an electric guitar or other uh, MIDI type device, uh, you can adjust those options there as well. You can also change the output so that it goes out through your headphones, or if you have a different output device, you can select that in this area as well. So from this point, we're ready to get started. If I click Choose, after selecting Empty Project, the screen will come up and ask where I want to uh, pull my sound from. What type of project do I want to work on? And I'm going to choose Microphone because this is a voice uh, centered project. We're going to create a little a voice introduction for the class. So we click on that little mic and then it asks which input do we want to use. Go ahead and just use the defaults in this situation. You don't need to change anything here, but feel free to read through there and, and play with it. Uh, but for the assignment we're doing, all, you should just have to leave it here on the microphone and hit create. At this point, we're ready to begin. Go on to step two, or go on to uh, part two for learning what to use and how this interface works.